Amen. What? No, I thought you said you don't want to hang out with him. I said, Lord, have mercy. I can't hear really good up here. Amen. 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 Me neither. I don't want to find out either. Amen. The book of Exodus this morning. The book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 15. Turn your Bible there. You'll find Genesis. Then you'll find Exodus. Amen. And uh, the Lord has given us a thought here and uh, kept us here. Give us this thought very early in the week and uh, uh, has kept us in this place. Exodus 15, when you've turned there, stand with us if you're able this morning, and we'll stand out of the reverence of the reading of God's Word, amen, and uh, uh, we do that out of respect to God's Word, amen, this is a holy book, amen. it's not just any other book, it's a holy book, amen, it's a living book, amen, and it's the only living book, by the way, amen, you won't find another, amen, amen, I'll go a step further, this King James authorized version's the only, Living book, amen. I didn't get as many amens as I wanted on that, amen. So some of y'all got the wrong Bible, amen. But Exodus 15, verse 22 is where I want to begin reading this morning, and we'll read the remainder of this chapter. And I'll try to give you a thought this morning that God's laid upon our hearts and uh, has really dealt with us with. Exodus 15, 22, the Bible says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. And they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord shewed him a tree, which when he cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and ordinance. And there he proved them... And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, where were twelve wells of water, and threescore and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. Let's pray. Father, we desire your help this morning. I pray that you'd loosen our lips this morning. Lord, let us preach to your desire, Lord. Father, I pray for your people this morning. I pray that you would minister to the hearts this morning of your people and uh, let us uh, be fruitful in our preaching today. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated. What's going on here where we find our text this morning? We find Israel after they've just got out of Egypt, Amen. They have been in bondage, amen, 400 years, amen, in Egypt, amen. Uh, Many generations have went through bondage in Egypt. But now God has delivered them out of Egypt, amen, delivered them out of the place of their bondage, the place that had them abound, amen. And He used Moses to do that. And let me say this to you, Moses did not deliver the people. God delivered the people through Moses. Amen. I believe in this life we give man too much credit. Amen. Amen. It's still God. Amen. Dad opened up this morning and read over there in 2 Timothy chapter 3. It said there's some that will have a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. Amen. You know there's many like that today. Amen. They've got something, amen, that only God can give, but they won't give God credit for it. Amen. Amen. It all goes back to God, by the way. Amen. Everything you see does. But I see in our text this morning that Israel has now been brought out of Egypt. Amen. They have been delivered out of bondage. Amen. But I find that they are not yet in the promised land. Amen. I don't find that they immediately come out of Egypt and the next step they take is into the promised land. Into the land that's prepared for them. Amen. I don't find that in my King James Bible this morning. Matter of fact, I find, amen, that it's a long time before they make it to the promised land after getting out of bondage. Amen. Say, preacher, what are you trying to say? Well, I'm trying to say this to you. There is some time between bondage and the promised land. Amen. If you're saved this morning, praise God, you're out of bondage. Amen. And let me say this to you. If you're saved this morning, amen, and you're out of bondage, we ought to live like we're out of bondage. Amen. Uh, Let me say this. They didn't go back to Egypt. 
Can I? Boy, it got quiet in there real quick. Amen. They didn't go back to Egypt after they were taken out of Egypt. Amen. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter number 6, he said, What profit had you in those things whereof you are now ashamed? Amen. We don't go back to a life of sin after God has delivered us out of it. Amen. Amen. I believe now say, preacher, are you sinless? No, and you ain't either. Amen. We sin, we fail God. I understand that. But I believe this, a true born again child of God will not go back to a life of sin. Amen. And be comfortable in it. Amen. I believe as a matter of fact, amen, I, according to my Bible in 1 John chapter number 5, I believe that a true child of God that goes back to a life of sin, God will take them out of this world. Amen. There is a sin unto death is what the Bible says. Amen. I would not that you'd pray for it. Amen. So there is a point where God says no. But let me say this to you. If you're saved this morning, you're out of bondage. You're not a servant of sin anymore. You're not in, 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 in your uh, uh, spiritual Egypt. But I want to say this to you as well. I love this country. I wouldn't want to live in any other country. I'll be honest with you. That's my personal opinion. Amen. And, but let me say this. This country is not the promised land. Amen. Amen. Uh, no matter who they put in the White House, no matter who they put in whatever house, this country will never be the promised land. It was never meant to be. Can I say this to you? No matter how much Israel wanted to make the wilderness the promised land, it was never the promised land. Amen. And let me say this, amen. I, I'm thankful that God's let us live at such a time as this. Say, preacher, surely you can't say that. Well, you ought to say that this morning, amen. You might be more effective in this time. Matter of fact, God knew you'd be more effective in this time than in any other time. Amen. Uh, but let me say this to you. I'm thankful that God's let us live in, in this time. But let me say this. Amen. That I've got a better land waiting for me. Amen. I've got a better country. Amen. That I'm going to one of these days. But before I get there, and after I've gotten out of bondage, there's still some time in between. And that's where we find ourselves. That's where we'll find ourselves today. Amen. The Bible said in verse 22, and let me hit this briefly and get to where I'm going. It said, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And the Bible says this, And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Amen. They, had, they were in the wilderness. Now let me say this to you, friend. Amen. This world ought to be a wilderness to us. Amen? We're pilgrims passing through. You don't put, I want to say this, you don't put stakes down in the wilderness. Uh -uh. You put stakes down where you're going to stay. Amen? Uh, you don't, uh, it's just like this. If you go on vacation somewhere, amen? We might like a vacation, amen? But you don't pack everything you got to go on vacation. Amen? You ought not. Amen? Why? Because you're coming back. Amen? Because you're coming back. Amen? Are you coming back? Let me say this to you. Don't put everything you've got in this world. Amen? Because this world is temporal. Amen? We're about to be out of here, friend. Amen? But let me say this to you. Before we get to the promised land, we've got to go through the wilderness. And the wilderness in your Bible, you'll find, is never a good place. It's never a fun place. It's never a happy place. Amen. But I do find that several times is a place where God meets with His people. Amen. But I want you to see here, it said they went three days in the wilderness. I mean, I find some interesting information in this text. It said, and they found no water. Amen. I don't know about you, but uh, uh, if you go a whole day without water, I, 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 I never thought in my life I'd ever have a situation to deal with a dehydration. I had that happen earlier this year. Went to the doctor and all kinds of pain. I thought I had the flu. I thought I had the corona before I knew what the corona was. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and the doc said, I think you're dehydrated. Here, take some of this stuff. Go get some of this stuff. And guess what? I took some of that stuff and I was all right. Amen. It was dehydrated. I never thought I'd deal with that. Amen. But let me say this to you. Friend, you go a full day without drinking any water and you won't be happy. You go three days without drinking any water and you really ain't going to be happy. Amen. But then verse 23 comes. And I'll get to where I'm going in just a second. Verse 23, it said, And when they came 
to Marah. So they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Amen. Finally got to a place of where it maybe looked like there was some relief coming. Three days we ain't drink no water. Amen. But we see some waters and then we, we, we take a little taste of it and it's bitter. And we can't drink of those waters. It was the bitter. Amen. And I find that Israel here, they find themselves, amen, in a bitter wilderness. And they're not just in the wilderness. But anything that could help them now is bitter to them. The things that are going on, they've been in the wilderness several days, and now they finally find some relief, or what seemingly looks to be some relief, but it's bitter. It's not going to help them. Amen? Let me say this to you, friend. Amen? I believe the United States of America, along with the rest of the world right now, is in a bitter wilderness. I believe our country... And God's people in our country is in a bitter wilderness right now. I don't know about you, amen, and, 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 and you say, preacher, you're crazy, amen, but I, I want to say this to you. I got some folks, amen, I got some people that I care about greatly, amen, and when they suffer, amen, I, I'd almost rather myself suffer than them suffer, because that makes me bitter, amen, that puts me in a state of bitterness, Amen. I've got so many folks right now that I know about that have this virus. That are battling this virus at their home. Amen. And you want to come up to me and tell me it's a political ploy. Shut your mouth. Amen. I got one amen. It's my daddy. Amen. That'll help. Amen. That's all right. It might just be me and him by the time this thing's over. Amen. Amen. But let me say this to you, friend. Amen. I've got folks that are on their deathbeds right now. Possibly dying of this thing. It makes me bitter. There's nothing that I can do. There's nothing that I can do to help them. And I find in this text, amen, that here's Moses. And Moses has these people with him, amen. And they've, they've went three days without water. And can I remind you of this? It ain't just them that's went three days without water. Moses has went three days without water. Amen. Moses is with them. Amen. And we find they get to, here to verse 23. And they found water, but it's bitter. Don't you think that bothered Moses? It had to in verse 24. Because then the people, mur people murmured against Moses. But if I remind you, if I may remind you, it wasn't Moses that brought them out of Egypt. It was God that brought them out of Egypt. Amen. And Moses knew that it wasn't Moses that brought them out of Egypt. Amen. That it was God that brought them out of Egypt. Amen. And Moses did what he knew to do. And I want to preach this morning on the bitter wilderness. Amen. The bitter wilderness. You know, sometimes in this life, let me say this to you, amen, we get uh, to, to going into things and things happen, amen, that just leave us bitter. Amen. amen. You get news from a doctor, amen, that you never thought you'd hear. It'll leave you bitter. That cancer word, amen, will leave you bitter. Amen. Your loved ones, amen, are going through things that will leave you bitter, amen. Hey, let me say this to you. Somebody that you thought would never leave turns around and stabs you right in the back. It will leave you bitter. It will leave you bitter. Say, preacher, no, it won't me. You ain't human then. Amen. amen. You ain't human. Amen. Those things will make you bitter, amen. When you thought, amen, that you had it all together and realized, amen, you didn't have a thing, amen, that will make you bitter. But I want to say this to you, a bitter wilderness is not uncommon, amen? We find God's people went through one, and let me say this to you, we'll go through one. But I want you to note some things that are present here in this bitter wilderness. Say, preacher, what do you mean? Look at verse 25. Moses, I find this, this is talking about Moses, and Moses did not wring his hands. You know that? I don't see that Moses freaked out. I don't see that Moses was pacing back and forth. But rather the Bible says, And he cried unto the Lord. Amen. Let me say this to you, friend. In the bitter wilderness this morning, amen, there is a God that listens. Amen. There is a God that still hears. Amen. Even in the midst of your bitter wilderness. 
Amen. Even in the midst of your bitterness this morning, amen, there's still a God that listens. Let me remind you of this, amen. I feel sorry, amen. I'm going to preach for a minute and that'll be all right, amen. But I feel sorry for those folks, amen, that have these other religions, amen. I'm tired of being told that we got to tolerate other religions. I don't like tolerating other religions because there ain't no other uh, uh, God, amen. Let me say this to you. Muhammad's in a grave somewhere this morning, amen. You can pray unto him all you want to, but he ain't going to hear you, amen. And let me tell you, this Buddha, amen, he's in a grave somewhere. You can pray to that stupid statue all you want to, amen, but that statue ain't going to hear you, amen. That statue ain't going to do nothing. You'd be just as good praying to Mickey Mouse, bless God, amen. Ain't going to do anything. Ain't going to hear you, amen. Allah is in a grave somewhere, amen. All these other false gods, Zeus and all these others, amen. You know why they're called mythology? Because the first word is myth, amen. That means it's probably not true. Amen. Amen. Let me say this to you, amen. There's still only one God. There's still only one Savior. Amen. And there's still only one King of kings, amen, and Lord of lords. And there's still only one living God. Amen. You might say, well, preacher, I, 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 I want to coexist. You can't coexist and read your Bible. Can I say that to you? Why you can't you can't uh, tolerate, amen, religions, amen, that uh, that that put uh, Christians' heads on sticks, amen, and read your Bible. Something won't work out there. Something will mess up there. Amen. You can't say it's all right for you to pray to your God and me to pray to my God and be right with God. I've heard a lot of folks say that. Well, just let them pray to the gods that they want to pray to. Not if you care about them, you won't. Not if you care about those people, you won't let them just pray to the gods that can't listen to them. Amen. You'll tell them about a Savior. Amen. You'll tell them about the God that listens. Amen. I read in the text, amen, that he cried unto the Lord. Amen. He, he, he reached out to God. Amen. There was only one Lord that would listen. Let me remind you of this. Amen. And there's a God that will listen in the bitter wilderness. Amen. When you get in your bitter wilderness, can I remind you of this? That maybe not everybody else can listen to you. Amen. Can I say this to you? Amen. And you won't understand this, amen, until you've been there. But there's sometimes your friends can't listen. Amen. There's sometimes, amen, that your family can't listen. Amen. Your mom and dad, there's sometimes they can't listen. And sometimes your pastor can't listen. Your church can't listen. Amen. I found that out. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and they told me, they said, they're just, he said, I've been thinking about some things over the years that I wish I had told other people. He said, but the only person that I could ever tell was God. But God was sufficient. He said, I found out God was sufficient in it. He said, sure, there were some things I, I could have brought to others, but what would, have that done? what would that have done to me? He said, but I brought them to God. Because God listened. Can I remind you of this, this morning church, and tell you this, not everybody you tell your problems to really is listening. Amen. Matter of fact, a lot of folks, amen, they're not listening to help you. They're listening to hurt you. Amen. I, I, it's a sad thing that we even have to say that, amen, but there is wickedness in the world. The Apostle Paul wrote and said, even now there was false prophets in the church. Amen. He told, uh, uh, he told them over there that uh, when I leave, there's going to be some uh, false prophets that's going to sneak in. They're going to sneak in unawares like wolves. Amen. And try to devour. You know what a wolf does, amen, uh, to the sheep, amen? A wolf will not attack the sheep together. If you ever, uh, I mean, uh, say preach, what do you mean? I mean, go home and watch Animal Planet for a little while. Amen. It'll help you, amen. But, but the wolf will not attack the sheep when the sheep are all together, but it will separate the sheep out. Amen. It'll separate the sheep out, amen. And usually there'll be more wolves waiting after that one wolf has separated the sheep. Amen. Let me remind you of this this morning, church, amen. There'll be wolves creep in, amen, unaware, amen, trying to separate the sheep. Amen? Not everybody that, that says, tell me your problems, really wants to listen to your problems. Amen? Some of them really want to uh, take advantage of your problems. Amen? But let me say this to you. I've found that God is not like that. Amen? 
But God's sole purpose in listening to your problems is to find a solution for your problems. Amen? It's to give you a solution for your problems. I don't think find a solution is a good word to say. Amen? He's already got a solution. We're going to see that in a minute. Amen? Uh, but let me say this to you. Amen? God wants us to bring our petitions to Him. Amen? So He can help us. Amen? Let me say this to you. You know why God wants us to bring our petitions to Him? Is because when you bring your petitions to Him, Amen, and, and He helps you with it, Amen, the only only person you could give credit to will be him. Amen. You won't be able to give credit to everybody else. I, I want to say this to you this morning, church. Amen. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 61. Let me turn here briefly, briefly this morning. Amen. The psalmist wrote Psalm 61. He said, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. And notice what he said. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. While the psalmist David that wrote that, he said, there are places I can get to when nobody else can hear me, but God, I can still cry unto you. He said this, let me, say, let me remind you of this, you'll never, you'll never cry unto God the way you ought to cry unto God until you admit what David admitted. He said, when my heart is overwhelmed, bless God, I can handle anything. Bless God, I can take on anything. Ain't nothing breaks me. Oh, when something comes by and breaks you, friend. When something comes by and breaks you, you unbreakable person. Amen. And that's when you'll cry, cry unto God. Amen. While we do well admitting early on that our heart's overwhelmed, admitting that we cannot handle, amen, the bitter wilderness. Can I remind you of this? That's what Moses had to do. There was nothing Moses could do to fix those bitter waters. Amen. He had to cry unto God. Amen. He had to look unto God. Amen. Ask God what to do. Amen. Hey, let me say this to you, friend. Amen. You can't solve the problem. You can't fix the problem. But God can. Amen. God is the one that can. Can I say this? God's waiting for our cries. It's not a burden to God for us to cry unto Him. We think oftentimes that we burden Him by crying unto Him, but God, and God knows what we're going through. God's not blind. God's not blind. Amen. God knows what we're going through. Uh, but let me say this to you, friend. God wants us to bring our petitions to Him. God does not desire for us to hang on to them. Amen. The Bible said in Jeremiah 33, 3, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and shew thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Amen. God wouldn't have told us to call him, amen, if he didn't want us to call him. <laughs> amen. What a thought. Amen. What a thought. Amen. Let me say this to you. I see not only in the builder wilderness that there is a God that listens, but I see this also. I see that there's a God that is prepared. Look at verse 25 again. He said, He cried unto the Lord, and get this now, and the Lord shewed him a tree, which we and he had cast into the waters. The waters were made sweet, and there made, them, uh, made for them a statute and ordinance, and there he proved them. Ain't you glad? Amen. Let me just take a recess for a minute. And ain't you glad the day that God showed you a tree called Calvary? Amen. Amen. And it was casted into your waters. Amen. When there was nothing but bitterness in your life. Amen. And He set you free. Amen. He changed your situation. Amen. By the way, if you got saved and there wasn't a change that happened. Amen. I'm not going to believe you're saved. Amen. I wouldn't bid you to believe that you're saved. Amen. If there wasn't a change that happened. Amen. I found that every person that has found Calvary's tree has come away different. Amen. I find that when the tree here was cast into the water, the water came away different. Amen. Uh, let me remind you of this. Amen. Uh, that tree on Calvary, amen, it's still changing people today. Amen. It was, amen, and it still works today. Amen. amen. Let me say this to you, though. I find in this text, I find that in this bitter wilderness, there was a God that was prepared. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I got to thinking about this as I studied this this week, and, and you might think I'm crazy, but uh, 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 we, just, I, we just put some Christmas lights up last night. I understand why Dad would get so frustrated putting those up when I was younger. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, it, 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 it was not fun. Amen. But let me say this. So we went riding around the neighborhood, and some folks had some wrapped around a tree. And I, I, I said, man, I wish I had trees in the front yard. <laughs> Amen. They cut them down over at the house years ago or just a few years ago, amen. I said, man, I'd, I'd be looking like the Griswolds out there, man. I tell you what, amen, I'd have every tree lit up. Amen, I figured that would be a lot easier than hang them on the gutters, amen, amen. 
Amen. Amen. But let me say this to you. Amen. I, I, I was thinking, me and mom were talking as we was talking about that. And mom had no clue what I was going to preach on this morning. But we was talking about that. There's some trees there planted in the front yard. Amen. And I'm not going to see them look like uh, the, the big trees. Amen. That was there. That's not going to happen in my lifetime. I mean, they're little twigs right now. Okay. Amen. Uh, my grandkids probably ain't going to see them, amen, looking like they used to look there in the front yard, amen. Say, so, preacher, why is that? Because a tree, amen, when a tree is planted, it takes time before it'll grow up. It takes time. Now, I want you to note this in your Bible, amen, that, I, that you refer back to Genesis 1 if you need to, but there was a God Amen. That spoke out on, uh, uh, walked out on the nothing and spoke, and there was something. Spoke this world into existence. Every every plant that's planted, amen. Every creature that's there, amen. And every tree, amen, that's there, amen, was planted by Him. Amen. In the beginning. Amen. But let me say this to you. Amen. I want you to think about this. Amen. And God showed me this, and I hope this will help you this morning. Amen. But God knew that they'd be here. And how long ago, amen, did God bring up that tree? That one tree. Amen. That one tree. The Bible said the Lord showed him a tree. Amen. How, how long, amen, did God have plans, amen, for that tree to grow and to keep growing, saying one day, one day they're going to come to that tree. One day they're going to need that tree. One day down the road. Hey, can I say this to you? God's not surprised by what you're going through this morning. Amen. God's not shocked by what's happening this morning. Amen. God's been planning, amen, for a long time, saying one day they're going to need that. One day they're going to have... have to look for me uh, to have an answer, amen, and I'm going to have one there, amen. Let me remind you of this, amen. This tree did not just sprout up overnight. God had a plan long before they knew they'd ever be here. Can I remind you of this? I told you those trees in the front yard, I'm not going to see them uh, sprouted up to, to what they were, amen, in my lifetime. And probably my kids and great grandkids won't see them in that. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. That tells me that this tree, that this tree, God had put it there before they, were, they even existed. You get that? God had a solution for their problem before they even existed. Not just before the problem existed, but before they existed. Amen. Get a hold of that this morning, church. Amen. And somebody ought to help me on that. Amen. God had a solution. God knew what you were going to go through before you even existed. Amen. Before you were even here. Amen. God knew. Amen. The bitter wilderness that we would walk through. Amen. In this life. Amen. Before we ever got there. Amen. God had this tree. Amen. He had it there. Amen. Now can I say this to you? Can I remind you of this? They've come through the wilderness. Now I need some help on this. But somebody tell me what you're going to find in the wilderness. Well, that, but I'm thinking more just literal. There's some right out there. Trees. Trees. And don't you think that walking through this wilderness, they'd seen a lot of trees. They had passed by tree after tree after tree. But my Bible said God showed him a tree. Amen. That meant this. Amen. Amongst what they had already seen, God had an answer hidden within. Amen. Amongst, hey, let me say this to you. Amen. Everybody's looking for the next big thing to be the answer. Everybody's looking for this and for that to be the answer. Amen. Hey, sometimes God might just put the answer right amongst what you've already been through. Amen. Right in the middle. Amen. Let me say this to you. They would have never found the answer if they hadn't been in the wilderness. Amen. They would have never, amen, found the answer to their problems if they had not been in an unpleasant place. Amen. I was listening to a preacher preach the other night, a Pastor John Smith. He pastors a church in, in West Virginia. Amen. And he was uh, preaching, uh, man, what a message it was on why I am thankful for that which I am unthankful. 
I, I'd encourage you to look that message up and listen to it sometime. Amen. And, but he said that there's some unpleasant things in life, amen, that have happened to him. But he would have never known, amen, some of the peace of, uh, the peace of God, amen, and the, 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 the presence of God and uh, the provision of God and all these other things if it had not been for those unpleasant things. If it hadn't been for those hard times, God might not have shown Himself, amen, in the way that He needed to see God. Can I say this to you, friend, amen, before you go walking around complaining about your bitter wilderness, ask what is God trying to show me in the midst of this bitter wilderness? What does God want want me to see, amen? Can I say this to you? It said the Lord showed Him a tree, amen. Let me remind you of this, amen. God knew they'd be here and God knew they'd need a solution, amen. It does not surprise God where you're at this morning, amen. It does not catch Him by surprise, amen, that you need a solution this morning, amen. He's got one, amen, and He's been waiting on it for a long time, amen. God knew that it would happen, amen. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. God's not shocked, and God's not worried, and God's not confused. I don't know about you, I I, I was thinking, uh, uh, we we look around and uh, it's that time of year again, you know, we're getting into the last month of the year, and and people start talking about next year, start talking about the the plans. I ain't seen one yet, but that'd be a new, new year, new me post, amen. And I, I, I don't really like them. <laughs> amen. Because <laughs> guess what? Amen. New Year, same God. That's what it'll be. Amen. Why, why, why we need to be different. Amen. Amen. I, if God saved me, amen, uh, 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 20 years ago, amen, then that same God can still save in 2021. But let me say this to you, amen. We're getting in that time of year where, where they'll say, I, 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 got the, I want to do this next year. And I want to do this in, in this year. And, and you remember, I, it got me to thinking about last year. Last year at this time. Folks had great plans. I had great plans. Amen. I had some things I was planning to do this year. Some places I was planning to go that I didn't go. <laughs> amen. That, that didn't happen. I didn't do those things. Amen. This COVID thing come in and, and hit us and, 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 and guess what? We were shocked. We were shocked. I, I don't think I, I, you'll talk to a single person that's going to be honest with you and tell you the truth. If you talk to them, amen, that'll tell you that they wasn't shocked by this virus. I think many of us, amen, at this point had thought it would be gone. And, and I think many right now are thinking that when the clock strikes midnight on 2020, it's going to be gone. <laughs> and it's going to, if we're going to 2021, it's going to be gone. It's not going to work that way, friend. It's not, it's not how it works, amen. Now, if God says the Word, that would be how it works. <laughs> amen, it would be just out of here. But I want to say this to you. There's some things, amen, that's just shocked me. And I'm going to be honest with you this morning. You, the Bible says confess your faults one to another. There's some things that's worried me. Where I've not been able to, 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 to say without a doubt that it's all going to work out. And I've gotten worried. I've wringed my hands. Amen. I've said, Lord, I don't know what to do. I, 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 don't, I don't understand. And can I remind you of this? Glory to God. There's been some things that's confused me. Amen. Well, I bless God if, if we're just on the subject of the virus. Amen. If you listen to the CDC, it'll confuse you. Amen. Amen. Me and Brother Clarence were talking last night and said, I, I, he said, I don't know what, how long you're supposed to quarantine anymore. <laughs> he said, because they change it every week, amen, of how long you're supposed to be inside or whatever. Amen. But let me say this to you, amen. God's not been shocked this year. Nothing happened this year that shocked God. I will go a step further. God's not been worried this year. Amen. God's not been worried. Amen. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me go just one step further. God's not confused. He's never gotten confused. Amen. He still knows His plan. Amen. Let me say this. As they went into the wilderness in verse number 22 and were walking into the wilderness, amen, uh, for three days without water, amen, God knew the exact direction they were going. He knew they was going down to Mara. He knew what Mara was. I want you to note in your King James Bible, amen, it said, now when they came to Mara, amen, the place was already called Mara before they called it Mara. 
I want you to get this. Amen. Some of you missed that. Amen. The place was already called Mara before they called it Mara. Amen. That meant this. Amen. God knew, amen, that there was bitter waters there, but He knew He had a tree sprouting up over here. Amen. And He was just waiting. Amen. He wasn't shocked when they got there and tasted of them waters. He wasn't worried about them getting there and tasting of them waters. He wasn't confused. Amen. About them getting there and tasting of them waters. Matter of fact, God was prepared for them to get there and taste of those bitter waters. Amen. God's prepared this morning. Amen. I found that in the bitter wilderness there's a God that listens. There's a God that's prepared. But can I show you this? And God showed me this and I, 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 it blew my mind. But I find, look at verse number 22. Go back to verse 22. What the Bible says. It says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and the Bible gives us some detail here, amen, that you, you might easily overlook. So then they went out into the wilderness of sure. That's important. Because I find that in that bitter wilderness, not only is there a God that listens, and not only is there a God, amen, that is prepared, but I find there's a God that's been there before. I find there's a God that's already been there. Amen. Say, preacher, how is he not shocked? Because he's been there. How is he not confused? Because he's been there. Say, preacher, what do you mean? In your Bible, amen, over in Genesis chapter number 16, we just studied on it on Bible study a few weeks ago, amen. And by a few weeks ago, I mean it's been about three months now because I'm slow, amen. But anyway, uh, but let me say this to you, amen. In Genesis 16, amen, uh, there's a situation that happens, amen. Uh, Abraham and Sarah, amen, they get tired of waiting on God. They get impatient with God and they make a decision, amen, that is the wrong decision, amen. And Sarah gives her handmade hate Hagar to Abraham. Amen. And Abraham lies and conceives a child with Hagar. Amen. That child's name is Ishmael. Amen. And but let me say this to you. Amen. And Hagar. Amen. When she conceives. Amen. Sarah gets mad at her. Amen. And Sarah kicks her out. Sarah runs her off. Amen. And Hagar runs out. Amen. Runs out of the house of Abraham. Now, and Abraham and everything and all the wrong that he's done in that situation, he's still the one that the covenant's with. He's still the one that God's promised, amen, uh, to, uh, to uh, bless his seed, amen. And, but Hagar runs out and she runs out of the house, amen, where God's covenant's at and finds herself in the wilderness of Shur. She finds herself in Genesis 16 in the wilderness of Shur. Amen. Can I say this to you this morning? It might be uncharted waters for the children of Israel. Amen. But it was not uncharted waters for God. <laughs> it might have been the first time they had ever seen the wilderness of Shur, but it was not the first time God had seen the wilderness of Shur. It might have been, let me remind you of this, it might have been the first time that they had come up here, amen, and had a need in the wilderness of Shur, but it was not the first time that God had met with somebody that had a need in the wilderness of Shur. Amen. Uh, let me say this to you, church. Amen. It, this, these times that we're in, amen, the society we're in, uh, the, uh, the, the, the troubles that we're in, the heartache that we're in, they may be uncharted waters for us. But they're not for God. Amen. They're not for God. My Bible tells me my favorite verse in the Bible. Some of y'all ought to be able to quote it by now. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. For the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Say, preacher, what's, what, what's that got to do with anything? It tells me this. The one that knew it all. The author is somebody that starts writing the book. The finisher is somebody that finishes the book. Amen? And it tells me he was both of them. It tells me he's the one that wrote the first page in my story. And he's the one that's already wrote the last page in my story. Amen? And, and that one, that one, amen, he went to a cross because he looked at my story. This might not help you, but this helps me. Because of who he is, because he's the author and finisher of our faith, he went to the cross. He endured the cross. Amen. He endured. Why? Because it was for the joy that was set before him, according to that verse. 
Amen. He saw something in your story. He saw something in my story, amen, that gave him joy to go to a cross of Calvary. Amen. But let me tell you this. It says not only that, but he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. That means the one that knows it all, that every secret you've got, he knows it. He's sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. He's making intercession for you and I right now. Amen. Can I say this to you? Amen. Say, preacher, I'm in uncharted waters. Me too. But you ain't alone and I ain't either. Amen. You ain't alone in this situation. Amen. Say, preacher, you don't understand my situation. I probably don't. Matter of fact, I'm going to go a step further. There's some things in my life you probably don't understand. But God does. Amen. And let me say this to you. Amen. I might not understand your situation, but God does. Amen. God knows what's going on. Amen. You're not alone in this. Can I say this to you? And I'm done this morning. Amen. In Genesis 16. Amen. When, when, when uh, Hagar, we, we studied this in the Bible study. Amen. But I want to bring it back out to you again real quick this morning. Back in Genesis 16 when Hagar sees the Lord. Amen. She calls Him the Lord. Amen. She calls Him God that sees Amen. Uh, but let me say this to you. If you study the, the Hebrew of that. Amen. That comes to the word El Roy. Amen. Say, preacher, what's that mean? That means this, the God that allows Himself to be seen. Now I want you to think about that this morning. The God that allows Himself to be seen. You see, they're here in the bitter waters. Amen. In the bitter wilderness. Amen. In verse number 25. But I find he, he has a lesson for them in verse 26. But verse 27 it said, and they came to Elam. It said, Where were three, or, or excuse me, where were twelve wells of water? Three score and ten palm trees. And they encamped there by the waters. Can I say this to you? God might just be setting us up to show us something that we've never seen before. Amen. God might just be, I, I want to say this to you. Amen. I, I appreciate the, the Christian heritage that we have in this country. Great men of God that stood in pulpits. Amen. That stood and preached the Word of God. Amen. And that have, they've had these crusades. Amen. Not all of them have been right. Amen. Uh, but some of them have. Amen. Have seen great work for Christ done. Amen. But let me say this to you. And we sit around a lot and we say, Oh man, those were the good old days. Man, it's just never going to be like that again. Man, it just, we'll just never see a time like that again. Amen. Can you think of when they tasted that bitter water, they might have thought we're never going to taste sweet water again. But I find that in the wilderness of Shur, Hagar called God the God that allows Himself to be seen. Amen. I find here in the wilderness of Shur in Exodus 15, amen, that right around the corner, amen, there was a place called Elam, amen, that had more water than they had seen, amen, that had more, amen, that had an abundance, amen, than they had ever experienced, amen, in their lives. And let me just say this to you. What if, what if, God's just setting us up to show us something we've never seen. What if God is just setting this country up? Setting this church up? Amen? Setting, setting His people up for a revival that we've never seen. Like we've never experienced. Can I say this to you? I know some folks that need to go to heaven. I'm ready to go home. But I know some folks that need to go to heaven. And I'm not ready to go home until I know that they're going to heaven. I'm looking forward to going to heaven. But I know some folks that need to go. Amen. That right now if they died, they'd be in hell. Amen. They'd lift up their eyes in hell. Amen. And can I say this to you? If it means we got to go through a little bit of bitter wilderness... To see God do something big again. And let's hang on for the ride. Amen. Let's just trust Him. Let's keep calling on Him. Amen. Let's keep, let's keep looking unto Him. Amen. Let's keep trusting His plan. Amen. Brother Eddie, come get a song. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. The betterment. I want you to think about this. Think about this. The betterment didn't come until after the bitterness. 
You know, God could have showed them the tree, showed Moses the tree before they ever tasted of the water. If God had wanted to. But God let them taste first. God let them taste the bitterness. And bless God, let me say this to you. I believe in verse 27, they were awful thankful for the betterment after they tasted of the bitterness. Can I tell you this? This bitter wilderness that we're in, the things you're going through right now, they're for you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, all things are for your sakes. Amen? God has it all worked out. It's all for us. Amen? Everyone stand this morning. As Brother Eddie sings, you might have a need this morning. You might be in that bitter wilderness. Amen? If you are, amen, there's, there's a solution. There's a remedy. You might be lost this morning. Or you can go to heaven. Amen? That, 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 that invitation is freely given this morning as Brother Eddie sings.